Alan Taylor's Apples. One of the engines in the shed was named Alan Taylor. He looked nearly identical to his brother Aaron, but he had red paint with a loud mouth to match. He never seemed to take much notice of Edward, but everyone took notice of Alan. They had to. He simply wouldn't stop boasting about himself. Look at you all, painted in drab greens and mournful blues. Lucky I'm here to bring some vomit to this shed. Edward chuckled quietly. The others groaned deafeningly. One morning, Alan felt very pleased with himself. He kept the time, and the passengers told him how splendid he looked. He arrived at the shed and found Gordon being ready for his afternoon train. Ought to fail spectacularly with another goods train, are you? <laughs> Dear me, Gordon, how can an engine like you struggle with a few measly trucks? I hope little Edward's at the ready, otherwise you will be in trouble. Edward gave a pitying look. Gordon harumphed, hissed away. There's no need to tease him, said Edward. He- Oh, a hush! Alan glared. You come out of the shed for a few days and suddenly think you can tell me what to do? I'm the lifeblood of all passengers' trains, and don't you forget it. Uh, with my grace and expertise, I'll have the express- Oh, interrupted Edward. Is that why the coaches needed the coupling hooks mended when I went to fetch them? Because of your grace and expertise? Alan scowled. He hid himself in a cloud of steam and pretended to be asleep. The next morning, Alan clanked into the station, still cross over Edward's remark. Be gentle, be gentle, cried the coaches. Come quietly, come quietly, he snorted. As the guard's whistle blew, he set off angrily. Silly little engine, he huffed. I'll show him grace and expertise. Alan would show Edward something, just not what he'd hoped for. Along the branch line was a church with an orchard. The apple trees were well looked after to ensure their branches didn't obstruct the line. That morning, some of the church boys climbed a tree too close to the railway. They thought they'd steal some apples while the vicar was preparing his Sunday sermon. Careful, John, said one. That branch doesn't look very steady. It's steady enough. Just you be ready to catch the apples. Soon, Alan came snorting along. He was still thinking what he'd say to Edward when they next met. Come along, come along, he puffed. The boys saw him approaching. Startled, they scrambled down the tree. The branch John stood on couldn't bear the weight any longer. As he jumped, it snapped, still clinging to the trunk, but dangling over the railway line. Come along, come along, snarled Alan. Come up. Ooh! Hearing a thud, the driver stopped the train. When he and the fireman came around front, they laughed until they <laughs> cried. <laughs> That's one way for us to get some peace and quiet, eh? Cackled the fireman. Apples were stuck in Alan's teeth. They and the branch muffled his cries of indignation. Saves him right. All that boasting gave me a terrible headache, smirked his driver. All day, Alan traveled up and down the line, the apples and the branch staying firmly in place. The passengers didn't think him splendid now. They erupted with laughter as he passed. Alan's face turned as red as his paint. Unlike the passengers, the vicar wasn't laughing when Alan next passed the orchard. Give me back my apples, you thieving engine! Alan tried to apologize, but all that came out was muffled gibberish. When the Fat Controller visited the shed that night, he wasn't laughing either. This wasn't your fault. I have spoken with the vicar about keeping his church boys in line. However, I do not approve of the commotion you've been causing. You will stay as you are. Perhaps a night of... Shh, hmm, quiet reflection will set you straight. He spun on his heel and strode away. The other engine snickered. I say, little Edward, winked Gordon. How does the old saying go? An apple a day keeps the controller aware. <laughs> it seems several bushels couldn't keep him from Alan, chuckled Edward. Alan had certainly gained expertise about apples, but he fell far from graceful.